Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna to teach you how to use a virtual camera inside Unreal to get handheld scenes like you see right here. So if you're interested, please like and subscribe and follow along. All right, first things first, I'm using the Dark Ruins Mega Scan sample level. If you wanna use the same level as I am, all you need to do is click on Window, go to Fab and type in Dark Ruins. It'll pop up right away. I do wanna warn you though, that this project folder has a lot of assets inside of it. So if you have a slower computer, maybe not the best idea. However, you can set up VCAM in any project. So if you have your own personal project you wanna set up in, definitely suggest that as well. So the first thing you need to do is go over to edit and go into plugins, since we need to enable certain plugins to make this work. So there's gonna be a few, I'll have them all listed up on the screen, but the first one is Live Link. And you wanna make sure Live Link right here is clicked. The next one is going to be remote session. Right here, make sure that one is clicked. And then from there, we're gonna go over to take recorder. It is this one right here. And then from there, we can do virtual camera. And you wanna make sure virtual camera is clicked. And then the next one, just delete camera and type in production. And you wanna make sure virtual production utilities is also clicked. And then to finish it all off, we're going to type in Apple and you want to do Apple AR kit and Apple AR kit face support. So make sure all of those are enabled and then restart your computer. Okay. Now that we're back in Unreal, the next thing we need to do is add in our IP address. So to do that, we're going to go over to edit, go down to project settings. And then on the left, just scroll all the way down until you see UDP messaging. And right here you see UDCast endpoint. Uh, was 000, we need to add in our IP address there. So the first thing you wanna do is click Alt, Option, or Start, R, uh, to get up the command box if you're in Windows. If you're in Mac, I'm not totally sure what that is, but a Google search should figure it out for you. And once you're inside here, just type in Command to bring up the command box. And then from here, just type in IP config, and it's gonna give you this IPv4 address. This is the address you want. So copy this and then exit out. Go over to Unicast Endpoint, delete what you have there and copy and paste it in. Once you have that done, you can just exit out. And now we need to bring in our VCAM. So what you need to do is go over here to this box of the plus, click on that, go down to virtual production and type in VCAM actor. And this entire screen is gonna pop up. And if I hold right click, WASD, uh, E and Q, you're gonna notice I can't move anything at all, uh, which is not what we want. So what you need to do is actually go over here to the details panel. So make sure you're clicking VCAM actor. Under the details panel, you're gonna see enabled and it's checked. You wanna uncheck that so it's disabled. And then you can right click on your VCAM actor, pilot it. You can even click on the camera to see what that camera's seeing. And you want to adjust your camera to being in the spot that you want it to be. Uh, the next thing you can do is actually set up how the camera is gonna look. So for me, I can't really see much right now. So if you click on your VCAM and scroll down, you can also change the settings here. So I'm gonna change this one over to DSLR, and then I'm gonna make this 28 so it's wider. Uh, I'll keep the 2.8 and everything else the same. And now that my camera is set up, I can go over to, actually let's maybe hit right, here, there we go. Now the camera's set up, I will go over to enabled and click it and this will pop back up. The next thing we need to do is actually go into your app store on your phone. So inside your app store, go over to the search bar and all you need to do is type in Unreal and click search. If you scroll down, you're gonna see Unreal VCAM, download this and then open it. All right, and now that you're inside the VCAM app, the next thing you're gonna see is uh, uh, unable to search the local network for Unreal Engine instances, click OK. You wanna make sure your phone is attached to the same Wi-Fi as wherever your Unreal Engine is working. So whatever desktop or laptop you're running your Unreal Engine on, make sure that and your phone are on the same Wi-Fi channel. Once you ensure that that is the case, go over to new network connection and type in the same IP address that you just typed into your Unreal Engine uh, software. Once you do that, this will immediately pop up. And now you are in your scene, looking around your scene using your phone. So the next thing you're gonna notice 
is we have a camera symbol and a wrench symbol on the left and right of our screen. So if we click on the camera symbol, you're going to see the same settings pop up on your actual Unreal Engine 2. Uh, and this is mainly just allowing you to switch up different things from your focal length to how you're going to track focus. Um, and different camera settings, as well as presets, as well as like ISO and, and different settings like that. All of these settings that you see here on the left can also be played with on the right here in your details panel. And then the wrench on the side, if you click on that, this is offering a bunch of different handy uh, features within your Unreal Engine. So if I click here, this is going to show me different sequences. If I click here, this is going to show me things I have saved. If I click here, it is going to pause my actual camera. So now when I move my phone, it doesn't actually change the way the VCAM is showing. And then I can click play to re-enable. If I click right here, this is locking the tilt. So if I tilt my camera left and right, it doesn't actually tilt. It only looks left and right without tilting the actual camera, which is a good way of locking the horizon. Uh, the next is the joystick or actually the movement gained. So if I wanted to, uh, I'm using right now the joystick to kind of turn the camera around uh, and I can change that speed by adjusting these movements. So if I go 10 times, now it moves much faster or slower depending on the speed that I attributed to it. So now if I go down back to one on both and then move, you're gonna see it's moving much slower than it was earlier. The next thing is here on the right which is the actual movement forward and backwards of the camera. So if I increase this to say five times and I move my camera forward, it will move much further than how it moved in real life. So now when I do 10 times, see how much farther it's gonna move forward. That way, if you have a small room, you can move your camera forward and backward without fully messing with your scene or, or needing the space that your scene provides. Perfect. So now that you know all those settings, the next thing we need to do is just go over to the record button and click record. And you're gonna see the take recorder and sequencer pop up and then click it one more time to start recording your scene. Okay, so now that that is finished, we need to go over here to take recorder and just exit out. Uh, after that, we can go over to the camera and disable it. That way we can have free motion again. So now click control space to bring up your content browser. And over here on the left, you're gonna notice you have a new folder called cinematics. So you wanna go into takes, go into the dates. And then once you get to this, go into the subsequence of whichever sequence you wanna be using. I shot twice, so I'm gonna go to the subsequence of my second one right here and double click on our level sequence. So now if I do control space again, you're gonna see we have a sequencer right here with all of our uh, recording. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is probably click on the camera button so you can view your recording. 
And then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is unlock your recording so you can make changes to it. So to do that, you click this little lock button and it'll be unlocked. And the cool thing about this is in the transform, you have keyframes for every little piece of movement that is happening in your scene, which is going to allow you to make a lot of good changes. The next thing you can do is actually add in anything from, let me close this and find our VCAM. I think it's at the bottom. Uh, you can change anything in the VCAM. So if you wanna change your crop settings after the fact, or you wanna change your focus settings or your film back and lens settings, you can change all these after the fact, after your recording, which is very handy when it comes to creating this video. So just to show you what I'm talking about when it comes to changing the current focal length, if I go over here to camera component, click on this, I can go then find current focal length, click on that, and then I can now adjust you down to 18. So now, although I didn't shoot it with an 18 focal length, everything is now 18 focal length, uh, which allows a lot of fun flexibility. If you would like to learn more about the camera sequencer, I also have a link below uh, of a tutorial I've done that kind of teaches you everything about the camera sequencer so you can effectively adjust this footage as much as you want. But this is how you set up your VCAM actor so you can shoot live within your scene. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.